Are you waiting for someone, madam? Or could I show you to a table? Um, I'm meeting a colleague for a business lunch, and I don't see him yet. So, um, yes, I I'd love to sit down. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, where are you? Oh, man, one o'clock. Cassie's gonna kill me. <sighs> yeah, McCarthy, hey, Kevin, just want to let you know I am sending something down to composing right now. No, I did not run it by copy, but I proved it myself so you don't have to worry about it. Oh, oh hey, hey, I don't have time to argue about this right now. I'm on a lead story and I'm running very late, so please just get it done. Andrew. You in a hurry? Uh, yeah, sort of. Something wrong? You, you look like you've seen a ghost. Vicky, are you still relaxed? Yes. And you'd let me know if anything was upsetting you? Yes, of course. Good. Because I know how hard this is for you. To talk about the time when you were going through your worst emotional problems and Kevin wasn't there for you. Kevin was working as a journalist in London. He didn't know how bad things were. That's what you tell yourself consciously. But what were you feeling at the time? I felt abandoned. Well, that's fair. He's your son. But he wasn't there. And that made you sad or upset or what? No, it made me angry. Because he was turning his back on you. You needed him. And he wasn't there. And that's what it must have felt like. He betrayed you. So why shouldn't you have felt angry? Uh, no. Jack, I want you to go with the tougher ending, okay? Great. Thanks. You got your message. What's up? Let me just make one final edit out of here. Okay, I'll come back. No, 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 no. Please, have a seat. I have made a list for you right here. What's all this? It is a list of appointments that I have made for us to go see apartments. And I know there is one that will suit you. You made appointments without asking me? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a little presumptuous even for someone like... <laughs> this is your very presumptuous coach, speaking from the heart. I've got to get you out of here now. I thought you wanted to stay outside. You know, it's, it's so hot out here on the terrace, though. So why don't we go somewhere cooler? Like the park. Nice shady spot, and then I can tell you what I've been meaning to tell you. What's wrong with you? You seem kind of tense or something. No. No, nothing bad. I just... Well, I told you last night. I have an idea. Something I think is going to make us... Well, I think it'll make things better for us. Okay. No, you just caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to see you. Andrew, how can I help you? Well, yeah, listen, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, Vicky and Clint aren't out front, and uh, 
Well, I, I need to make some last-minute schedule changes in the adult classes over at St. James, and I, I realize this isn't what you do exactly, but if you could use your clout, get it into tonight's paper, you'd save some students a lot of frustration. I mean, if you can't do it, you can't do it, I understand. God, what was I thinking? What am I doing here? Kevin, nothing happened last night. Oh, Cassie, I am not playing that game with you anymore. I am not playing the nothing happened game. It wasn't too much fun the first time. So why don't we play the something did happen game? Because something did happen, and you know. Okay, something happened. Something stupid. And totally my fault. Well, I get a little of the credit. No, Kevin, I shouldn't have tried to sneak into the men's steam room last night. It was a dumb, stupid stunt. I'm just talking about you being in the steam room. Well, I am. Well, I'm not. I'm talking about you and me, what happened in the steam room between us. Okay, if something happened, and I'm not saying it did, but if something happened, I wish it hadn't. And I wish we weren't having this conversation right now. Well... We are. And something did happen. It only happened because we both wanted. Well, I didn't, Kevin. I really didn't. All right? And whatever you think it was, it, it really wasn't. Guess you're not being honest with me. For yourself. Well, let me, okay? Why are you pushing me? What do you want from me? I just want to be able to talk about this. Talk about this. Talk about this. Andrew, I'm so sorry. I, I, I just get so spaced out when I finish up an article. It's, uh, where's the announcement you want me to run? That would be in your right hand there. Well, so it is. Uh, look, there should be no problem getting this in. The paper's not to bed yet, so don't worry about it. Okay, listen, let me just make sure you can read my handwriting, because I can tell you, Cassie says it's absolutely abysmal. All right. Oh, hold on. You can. Uh, Buchanan. Kevin, it's Cassie. Uh, I'm on my way. No, listen. Um, it's not a good idea, so don't bother. I I'm leaving. No! Kevin. Look, I know I'm late, but I will be there. Now, please, stay put. I promise I have one more thing to clear up on my desk, and then I am out the door. This is very important, so please... You know, I've got a perfect apartment for you. One bedroom, no view, right next to the land view dump. What do you think about that? Sounds great. How much? Fifty million. Let's take it. Patrick, you haven't even listened to one word that I've said. I mean, that is exactly why I have got to get you away from here, away from the stables, away from Mr. and Mrs. Moody. It wasn't my idea that they moved to the bloody country club. But they did. And it's impossible for you to get Marty out of your thoughts. Unless you like pining away like this. No, I don't. Okay, then. Let's do something about it. I've made a list. Let's go see some apartments. No excuses. Why don't you just put a leash around my head, huh? Uh, Patrick, roll over. Fetch me something. Sit down. Great. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but I wish you were a little bit more versatile. But you're not. The only thing that you've managed to do is to play dead. And I'm going to snap you out of it right now. Even if I have to be bossy. Hey, it's my nature. Come on, and there's got to be one place here. I know this place is going to be perfect for you. Well, something cheap and simple. Guess again. You have... Poetry in your soul. So you need an environment that's gonna match that. Something romantic and quirky. So, come on. You gonna let me show it to you? So, what did you want to talk to me about? 
Oh. Nice catch, Dylan. Yeah, did you like that? I didn't even need a glove. Here you go. <laughs> Doofus here missed the ball that bounced right in front of him. <laughs> out of the park, which made it a home run. I still say it was a ground rule double. The ump almost kicked him out for arguing. Well, actually, Tom's about half right. Anything that is hit inside the park is a ground rule double. So, does that clear things up for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. All right, have fun. All right. Yo, Dylan here said there was a ground rule double. <laughs> you ever notice how those kids light up when you're around? Yeah. I guess they kind of do the same for me. No matter what kind of mood I'm in, they always seem to make me smile. You remember on our wedding night when we talked about having a family? Yeah. I also remember how I said that I want me and you to spend a little time together alone first. Did you ever wish that we'd started right then? I used to. But, um, well, since this happened... Well, this is sort of what I wanted to talk to you about. I don't think I follow what you're telling me. What, what do you think about us trying to have a baby? Vicki, tell me what you're feeling right now. I feel angry, but I don't want to be angry. At Kevin? Yes. He let me down. He didn't come home, even though he knew I was in trouble. But you said Clint discouraged him from coming back. Yes, he should still have come home. Vicki, I know you don't like to be angry. But is this anger overpowering? No. Exactly. You can handle it. And we'll continue to work on that. But it's time to end the session, and I'm going to bring you out now. And when I do, you won't remember anything that we talked about specifically, but you will feel relaxed and positive. So from this time until we meet again, whatever emotions you feel, especially towards Kevin, you will experience them very clearly and you'll be able to act on them with confidence and strength. When I snap my fingers, you'll be wide awake and refreshed. Ready? One, two, three. Vicki. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm fine. It's always a little surprising coming out of hypnosis. At least it was with Susanna. I, I must be getting better at it because I feel so relaxed. Much more than I did at the beginning of the session. I don't remember what we talked about. Don't worry. It'll come back to you. Most of it had to do with you learning how to acknowledge your feelings and to act on them consciously, instead of letting them fester. But I've done terrible things. A part of you has. And I understand why you're still very much afraid of that. But you're just beginning to integrate the parts of your personality, even the angry ones. And what you have to learn now is how to get mad, and then how to get over it. Even, or maybe especially, when the person you're mad at is also someone you love. Look, there's someone here right now, so I really can't talk, but you have to stay put. I am halfway out the door, and this is very important. Kevin, I'm sorry, but no. Uh, but, wait, please don't hang up. Let me put you on hold for just two seconds, okay? Look, Andrew. Sorry, but this is very important. It's a source, and they're getting cold feet. Hey, I, I understand. You don't want me around. You know, I'm married to the competition, right? Right. Uh, hey, look. Do, give me this. I promise I'll get it in tonight's edition, okay? All right, thanks. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure you can read the handwriting. Good luck with the story. Let's just hope it has a happy ending. Cassie? Cassie? Damn! 
truth be told, I like the image you have of me. Lonely, romantic poet. But you have to think a little deeper, Blair. What do I do for a living? I clean out the stables and I read dusty books to students who don't want to listen. Not exactly the stuff that Troubadour's ballads are made of, are they? Oh. Can tame a rebellious deed and then set the student souls on fire. Mm, mm, mm. Could anything be more romantic? Mrs. Manning? Oh, hello, Rosalie. Rosalie? Patrick Thornhart? Patrick. Hi. Hi. And it's Chief Romani's daughter. <laughs> Chico Mani had to go to Philadelphia. Hello, my gorgeous, gorgeous baby girl. How are you today? I just changed her diaper, so she should be fine. Oh, um, you. But you said I could have an hour off? Oh, certainly. We'll manage. Oh, okay. okay. Then I'll be back in a bit. Okay. Just park that over there. Look who's here. This is Mr. Thornhart. Guess what we're going to do for him today? We are going to take him house hunting. We're going to find you the best house in the world, Patrick. Hi, Huh? Yeah. Yes, you're right. Your mommy can be a little pushy. Oh. What do you say? Oh, yes. I'm the same. We're we in agreement. We're not ready to settle down yet. We're going to dance to the song of the open road. No, no, don't. She's crying. I didn't know that you liked children so much, Patrick. They don't, they don't seem to like me that much. You go back to your Oh, baby. Great. I'll have my own one day. What are you saying? I can I can listen to this. Okay, what? What is it? Yes, absolutely. She says it's not a good day to go apartment house. Let's go take her dancing. Let's go dancing. Come on, you'll lead our fall. Yes, okay. Come on, Anna. Here's your baby. I'll be right there. <laughs> You know it's possible, a doctor said, if we wanted a child, and I, I know what a wonderful father that you would be. What I would have been, but not now. But I thought having a family was something we always dreamed about. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, I used to think about how our love together would fill up the house with children. How I could take them hunting and fishing and, and build forts with them and tree houses and... Look, the kids don't need a coach. They just need a dad. Yeah. Marty, my dad, he used to pick me up and he'd put me on his shoulders and he'd walk around with me. And he was so proud of me. And I, uh, when I was up there, I felt like I was the king of the whole world when I was on his shoulders. And you don't feel like you could make our kids feel the same? Oh, what, you think I can do it from a wheelchair? What do you want me to do, roll them well, around so, in my lap? So you're sitting down, you're not standing up. What difference does that make to a child? As long as you, as long as you show them how to do the things that really matter. I can teach them how to ride a bike. But you, you can teach them the things that are more important, like how to be compassionate and, and have courage and, and, and be gentle without being weak. All the things that make you the wonderful man that you are. You have such gifts. You don't want to waste them, do you? Look, I know what I'm asking is scary. I'm scared, too. But I say we just take the chance. See what happens. While you wait for the person who's joining you... You mean the person I... who stood me up? There's a traffic jam on the interstate. Oh, I hope my colleague is stuck in it. Listen, I'll take a glass of white wine if that'll make you happy. You've got ten minutes, Kevin. Ten. Sally, I'm hacked. I'm sorry I'm late. Listen, can you just get River ready for his bath? I'll be up there to join you guys in a second. I just want to check on a few things. Oh, boy. Uh, hi, Vicky. Hi, please just, come in. You. Come in. I, I, I just missed you down at the banner, and I guess you were here and I was out, so... Yeah, yeah, I just need to finish up our conversation about the, uh, the fundraiser. Anyway, you weren't here, so I had made notes. I typed them up. Oh, thank you. Thanks for doing that. It's going to be a big help. So, whew, everything okay? I get the feeling that the, the fundraiser's not your primary concern right now. Boy, am I that obvious? Uh, Tell my therapist. He thinks I don't let my feelings out enough. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a little problem. Do you have a minute? Yeah. Just thank you. Hold on. Sally, go ahead without me. I got some company, and I'll... I'll be there in a sec. It's uh, River's Bath Time. It's an oh. epic, yeah. major production. <laughs> yes. 
So what's up? What's going on? I got a problem with a family matter? Or... Well, I guess in a way. I consider Marty part of my family. Oh, yes, yes. And you are worried about Marty and Dylan. Well, aren't you? Yeah. Andrew, things are not getting better between them. They are getting worse, yeah. if anything. Dylan is so angry all the time. I called him on it a little while ago. Mm -hmm. And poor Marty's trying to hold everything together all by herself. She doesn't want to go to anyone for, for help. I don't know how long she can hold up that way before she snaps. Well, if she hasn't already. What do you mean? I bumped into her the other night at Rhodey's, and, uh, well, she was not in great shape. In what way? Feeling a little low. Was she drinking? Yes. Oh, God. And with the lupus, that's like putting a loaded gun next to her head. Oh, Andrew, I didn't know it was that bad. God, I feel so helpless. Yeah, so do I. Which is exactly how Marty and Dylan probably feel. Well, there must be something we can do, some way to let them know that there is light at the end of this tunnel. <sighs> is there light at the end of the tunnel? That's what worries me. Dylan, please. I'm not saying that to get pregnant tonight. Where did you get this idea in the first place? Well, I know it's kind of out of the blue, but... Don't you at least want to consider it? I mean, having a baby in the next year or two. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, let alone the next year or two. How can you expect me to plan a year in advance? For Maybe the way you that... should. But we're never going to get any better. We? I'm the one in the wheelchair. Yeah, and I'm the one who said I'd stay with you till death do us part. But what we've got here is worse. Because you've given up, and I, I don't know how to argue with that anymore. I'm, tr I'm trying to do something. Why don't we do something to, 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 to say we believe in a future? Let's have a child, and then, and then our, our family, our child, can be what we believe in. <laughs> I love me. Did you drop Fuzzy Bunny? Where is your Fuzzy Bunny? Mommy's gonna have to go find it. I think we dropped it by the pool. I'll be right back. Come on, Star, let's take a nap. Why don't we just go inside? It's a lot cooler in there. We could get a bite to eat. Actually, I'm not very hungry. And besides, I've got to meet my therapist in the weight room in just a minute, so... Oh, that's good. Well, I mean, I know how much better it makes you feel to leave all that tension and everything. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty cramped up in this thing. Here, I come along and throw the idea of having a baby at you. Marty. Look, I'm not saying that I hate the idea. It's just that when I thought of it, well, I didn't mean it to be the answer to all our problems. It just made me happy. For a little while, and I thought it might do the same for you. I mean, just the picture of uh, you and I in bed together with a little baby snuggling between us. Well, it sounds like a great dream, but we've got to get back to reality here. Look at me. Look at you. Look at us. I don't think we're in any position to be having a child right now. Tell me you're giving up no, on them. No, no, I'm not giving up, and I haven't lost hope. It's just that after all these years as a minister, there's one thing I know, and that's that you can give, you can give all the advice under the sun to people. It's never enough. They got to do it on their own. Well, I know you're right. It's just awful to stand there and do nothing. <sighs> Ugh, maddening, isn't it? I guess all we can do is let them know that they have friends who love them, and that we'll be there when they need us. Hmm. All right. Well, I took up enough of your time. No. Yeah. You don't want to miss all of River's Bath. You want to bet? <laughs> what a pretty bouquet. Oh, yeah. I got them for Cassie. For Cassie? Mm -hmm. You old romantic you. Yeah. You still bring your wife flowers? Let me ask you something. Do you think that it's possible for a husband to fall in love with his wife over and over again? Oh, Lord, yes. You have to do that if you can. Isn't that nice? I'm really glad it worked out that way for you, because I'm quite sure it hasn't been easy, readjusting to life in a 
two-career family. No, it hasn't, you know, especially with Cassie getting so obsessed about her writing and River and I kind of get lost in the shuffle, or, you know, that's the way it feels some of the time. Well, I don't think Kevin has been very helpful in that regard. You know, he's so competitive. And now that Cassie has become a rival of his, he keeps upping the ante between them. Well, you know, since you brought it up, I gotta admit there's some times when I wish Kevin would just kind of back off. But uh, then again, I take a look at Cassie's writing because of the competition, you know, I gotta admit it's some of the best stuff she's done her whole life. And that's where we're at, you know? She's really turned on by this job and I'm trying not to get too jealous about it. And then, you know, all of a sudden, I'm... You're in love with your wife. <sighs> again. Somebody here, a very attractive young lady with long black hair. She left. Damn. Is this where she was sitting? In that case, bring me an iced coffee. I have a feeling she's going to uh, come back for these. for a yes or no answer, I mean, having a baby, but it's a big decision. It's, it's always complicated. No, actually, it's not a big decision. It's a simple decision. But, Marty, right now, I'm having to come to terms with myself and that I may never walk again. And I don't think that's fair to a child to bring it in a mess like this. Listen, I know that this is what you want. But not right now. Cassie's going to love these flowers. If I could, I would have bought her every flower in the store. She's a lucky girl, and you're a lucky guy. Yep. I mean it. You have something very special because you worked very hard at this. You know, keeping your marriage together, two careers, raising a son. Excuse me. Oh, it's the office. Oh, she's sorry. Use the phone. You know Thank where it is. You. Oh, hi, it's Vicky. You page me. 
He what? Well, that is totally unacceptable. Where is he? All right. I'll come down and fix it myself. Honestly, I could kill him. Who? Kevin! He had a very sensitive job to do. He had to do a major rewrite on somebody else's story that they totally botched up. Do you know what he did? He sent his version to composing without proofreading it. It is full of mistakes. It's for a controversial front page story. And I can't even call Kevin on the carpet about this because no one can find him. And we've had to delay the press run. Wonderful. Honestly, I love that boy, but sometimes he drives me to distraction. Sounds like it must have been building up for some time. I rarely see you get this upset about anything. Well, I usually hold it in. But no, my psychiatrist told me I'm supposed to let my feelings out. So I'm going to do it. And my friends and family can learn to duck. Hey, you know, I, th I, one, I, I think feisty suits you. <laughs> Let's see if Kevin agrees with you. Don't be too rough on him. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, give Cassie my love. I will. Andrew, I really am very, very proud of you. Uh, you have worked very hard at this marriage, and you're both totally committed to it. I swear to God, I wish that Kevin would commit like that to, to his job, to anything for that matter. So what were you going to do, go out and hawk these on the street? No, I was hoping you'd come back for them. I had to. They're very expensive. I couldn't afford to lose them. On your big reporter's salary, I would think you could buy another pair. They were also a gift from Andrew. Wait, Cassie, come on, please. Look, I know you're upset, and I know I'm very late, but things got really weird at the office. Uh-huh. Really? Like, for instance, the person standing at my desk when I had you on hold was Andrew. What? Oh my God, did he know I was meeting you here? No. It was just coincidence. He was dropping off an announcement for St. James. He had no idea you were on the other line, but I couldn't talk. Oh, great. So now we're keeping things from my husband. Kevin, this is it. It's over, okay? Cassie, we haven't done anything. Now, why are we sneaking around as if we had? Kevin, what do you want from me? I don't know. But there is something going on between us that we have to talk about. What? Whatever it is that's making us feel the way we do, that thing. And I know you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Even going back to the day when you bowled me over in the airport and I stooped out to help you pick up those folders. You I... also stole one of those folders, Kevin, so you could scoop me on a story. Maybe that's this thing that you feel, the thrill of beating the competition. No, it's not, because I thought that's what it was, too, at first. But then that little prank I pulled you on you in the woods, we got into the little wrestling match, and we got about this close. And then you rolled away, and I wish to God you hadn't. Because it was then that I knew I was in trouble. I knew. Because I wanted to kiss you so bad, I could... It scared me. Kevin, take a cold shower. I have. And they don't work much. And then yesterday, Cassie, in that steam room, I don't even know if the thing was on. I think all that steam was just you and me. No, it wasn't, Kevin. I don't feel this way about anyone but my husband, to whom I'm happily married. Andrew Carpenter, remember him? Yes, I do. Good, because you act as if you don't, as if I jump into bed with any man who looks at me. You look at me. Kevin, you're an attractive man, so get over it, all right? Now, I'm not going to betray my husband. I don't even believe he'd think I would. Mommy! I missed you so much! Oh, I did! Oh, we missed you, too. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, you're not late. I was early. You know why I'm early? Because I wanted to come home early. Because I missed you. Mm. What are those for? Those are for you. Do I need a reason? No, but they're just beautiful. So are you. Not to mention being a fantastic reporter and a great mommy and probably about the best wife a guy could ask for. So I got you some flowers. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. I just don't know that I deserve them. Listen to that, River. She's modest, too. <laughs> hey, Mom. 
Kevin, where have you been? I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing? Sorry, I've been meeting a source. For a story that you were assigned? No, not exact. What's with the third degree? The expose on the transportation scandal, the one you were supposed to rewrite? That I did rewrite and sent to composing. Did you proofread it? Kevin, where was your head? You could have set us up for a very serious libel suit. I had to come back here to the office and clean up your rewrite. As a result, the press run was late. And the Sun sold out its first edition because there was not one single copy of the banner on any newsstand in Landview. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. How could you have been so completely and totally irresponsible? I was, I was running late. The phones were ringing. Andrew came in Is with a last-minute... Is that an minute... excuse for not doing your job? No. It won't happen again. I promise. Can I trust you to keep that promise? Mom, I have my own story running tomorrow and it's down and composing. Maybe I should check that out first. I think that's an awfully good idea. Anything wrong? No. No, I just read the riot act to Kevin over some very slipshod work he had done for the banner. And I didn't cave in. I was very strong, I was firm, I let him know exactly how angry I was. And for some reason, I wanted to call and tell you. And it felt good. Vicky, that's wonderful. I'm proud of you. Good for you. So, Hypnotherapy maybe should be the way we should go for a while. I think so. I mean, I feel so strong and confident already. And you know something? We've just begun to scratch the surface. <laughs> Sir Galahad! Get off your horse. Excuse me. You've got that wounded, soulful look again, like you want to go rescue Marty again. I'm that transparent, am I? Hmm. But you are in training, remember? And I am your coach, and I'm going to crack the whip. You're getting on with your life, so this time I say, let's do a hundred-yard dash away from Mrs. Moody. Let's go. Get everything together here. Oh, great. Have you had enough time off? Yeah. Are you ready for me to text her home now? Just a minute. Let me go check on her just a second. Margaret, I know it's not my place to come over here, and I have no right to ask you what happened between Dylan and you, but, um... You look in pain, so if there's anything I can do... This person I need to see right now. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry I bothered you. You're hopeless. Yeah. Just help me find a new home, please. Now. 